What's going on everyone? It's Jeff at Lockdown Security, uh, www.lockdownsecurity.ca. Uh, I'm making a video right now to show all of our auto start remote control buyers how to program your auto start remote control if you do not have a hood pin. Now, uh, an optimum way to film this video would have been to have a vehicle equipped with an auto start system, but unfortunately I do not have a vehicle here in my bay that has an auto start system in it. Uh, all I have is this fancy Honda Civic right now. But uh, I do have a brand new Auto Start AS1272 hooked up on my bench, connected to uh, our power supply, which I've wired up to kind of give you a brief demonstration on how to program an Auto Start remote without a hood pin. Uh, the reason why we're making this video is that Auto Start remote programming instructions state you need to have a hood pin in order to program the remote. A lot of people ask us a uh, question of what is a hood pin? Well, a hood pin is basically this guy. It's a spring-loaded switch that's usually mounted under the hood of your vehicle. Uh, we have another YouTube video describing where to find it. And what it does is it basically outputs ground to the remote starter when the hood is open. The problem is a lot of installers do not install these pin switches or in the rough environments where most people use remote starters, the hood pins break or they corrode or uh, mechanics shut the hood too hard, etc., etc., and they break. Now the principle of a hood pin is basically a wire is connected to the bottom. That's where this uh, pink connector is. And basically what happens is the shaft is made of plastic and the threaded portion is made of light gauge steel. When the hood is closed, the electrical connector on the bottom of the plastic shaft is uh, electrically open, so the contact is broken. When the hood goes up, the pin switch springs up and contact is made. Contact is made to the threaded shaft, which in turn is connected to chassis ground on the vehicle, which then outputs chassis ground to the remote starter. Uh, the wire that this hood pin is connected to on all auto start systems is gray in color. Now here on my bench is an auto start AS1272 controller. Now not to worry, auto starts use the same style of controller and the same style wiring for the last 10 to almost 15 years. Basically it works like this. You have what we call the main heavy gauge harness. This is where your power ignition, starter, uh, and second ignition accessory outputs are located. You have your secondary connector which holds chassis ground, tachometer, gray, which is your hood pin, orange, which is your brake input, yellow, which is parking lights. You have a third connector, which has got your arm, disarm, lock, unlock, etc., etc. You have your antenna connector. You have your secondary connector for auxiliaries. And then on the back, you have another bank of connectors. We won't worry about the back for now. What we are mainly focused on for this video is the gray wire. That is the hood pin wire. On all auto start remote control or remote starters, gray is always the hood pin input. If you have a controller under your dash that looks like this, gray will be the hood pin input. The procedure that you're going to want to follow if you do not have a hood pin is going to require you to get up underneath the dash of your car. You're going to have to locate this controller. It's going to be dark underneath the dash. You're going to need a light, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. The wiring is more than likely going to be covered in tape. It's probably going to be zip tied up, so you're probably going to have to cut some zip ties to get down to it. The purpose of this video is to kind of give you a visual and video explanation of exactly what we try to tell you when you call in to ask us how to program a remote without a hood pin. If you feel uncomfortable taking the dash of your vehicle down or uncomfortable with this type of operation and you don't understand the electrical terminology that we're talking about, please consult a professional installer. They will save you so much time and so much headache. The minimal charge that you'll probably have to pay to program the remote will far, far outweigh the aggravation and time that you may spend doing this. But if you are technically inclined and feel comfortable with doing something like this and taking the dash down, here is exactly what you need to do. Now, I've hooked this wiring up to my power supply. Power and ground is run down. Um, and what I've done is I've put a little pigtail wire on the ground input. That's what this wire here is for. Now I'm just gonna put my camera down so I can set it up and allow you to see exactly what I am doing. Give me two seconds here. Hopefully my view is relatively good here. Let me just put this down a little bit more. I hope that you can see. So basically what I'm gonna do is 
I'm gonna try and show you how to program these remote controls, okay? Auto Start AS1272, this is brand new, so they're in plastic bags. I'm just gonna leave these two remotes right here. Now what you're gonna notice is I have a light bulb hooked up and a toggle switch. The light bulb is there to indicate parking lights, the toggle switch is there to mimic your ignition key. Now, what's gonna happen is basically, we are going to wanna probe the hood pin input with ground. We're gonna take this little pigtail wire that I have cut, I'm gonna move the camera over here so you can get a little bit better view of what I'm doing. I'm gonna take this end, I'm gonna stick it in the black wire. Black wire is always ground. Now be careful here so that you don't short this out with any other inputs. Make sure the car is off when you're doing this. And you're gonna take the other end and you're gonna probe it into the gray wire. When I do that, what's gonna happen is this light bulb is going to illuminate, okay? So basically, if I go like this, you'll see the light bulb illuminates. If I take ground away, the light bulb goes off. Now, according to the instructions, what you need to do is you need to do a procedure called flashing the hood pin. What flashing the hood pin is, is basically you open or short this wire to ground so it sees a ground input coming. So we're gonna go like that, remove ground, and then replace ground like that. That's called flashing the hood pin. Now I did it wrong there. I didn't do that fast enough. So let's try that one more time. I know I did it wrong because the parking light shut off. So what I do is I basically flash it, remove it, and then reflash it again. Now these parking lights are gonna stay on for up to 20 seconds. What I wanna do, I'm just gonna remove that because we can get some smoke burning my carpet. I'm gonna turn the ignition on, off, and then I'm gonna hit the lock button and now the parking lights are gonna flash five times. I have successfully programmed my first remote. If I want to program another remote, I'm gonna turn ignition on, off. I'm gonna take my second remote and I'm gonna press the lock button and it flashes the lights five times. So I'm gonna repeat that. Now it's kind of tricky because I gotta hold this bulb. It's uh, smoking on my carpet because the bulb is getting hot. But basically what we're gonna do is this. So again, we're gonna take this pigtail wire that I've cut you're gonna stick one end into the black wire, which is ground on the auto start controller. You're gonna take the other end, you're gonna probe it quickly in the gray, release, probe again, and now that light is gonna stay on. You turn the ignition on, off, and then press the lock button on your first remote. If you have a second remote, you're gonna turn the ignition on, off, lock button on your second remote, and so on and so forth. As long as you get those five flashes like that, that means you have successfully programmed it. Now, I know that this can seem a little tricky, but I hope that this kind of explains to you exactly what I'm talking about or what we're talking about when we tell you to go up under the dash and get the gray wire and probe it to ground. Uh, but if you are uncomfortable doing this, you know we, we do recommend that you consult a professional installer and have them install a hood pin or perform this exact procedure that I've performed safely and comfortably in a shop. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us, 1-866-824-4118, or email us sales at lockdownsecurity.ca.